to God. Glory to God here. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight says that the God of all grace, the God of all grace is able to, is able to, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always have an all sufficiency in all things. You may have an abundance to every good work. So hereby we also see at the end of the text that abundance empowers good works. So abundance is not just for you to say that, hey, I have wealth, I have riches, but it's because there's a divine assignment that God wants to demonstrate through you to others the goodness of God. And see, the more wealth you have, the more abundance you have, the higher the demonstration, you see? Because when, when you're having wealth and abundance, you actually can show forth the glory of God with more intensity, the goodness of God with more intensity, with, more, uh, with even more compassion. But look what it says, God is able. So it, it is an ability. All grace is an ability. See, all grace is in the seed. See, sowing is the ability of God imparted to you. You have sowing inside of you even before you call on the name of the Lord. But when you call on the name of the Lord, he activates the sowing. All of the grace of God is in the act of honor, in the act of seed sowing into your man of God. So that's why you won't know the fullness or the greatness of who you are without the seed because he hid all of the grace in the seed. Now, when we deal with our grace, even peace of mind is a grace. Even pleasure is a grace. Joy is a grace. Wealth is a grace. Health is a grace. Um, energy is a grace. Focus is a grace. So all these graces are hidden inside of the seed. So think about that. If the devil can stop your seed, he can stop all graces. Because the seed is going to keep all graces coming towards you. Now watch this. It says something amazing there. It said that God is able to make all grace abound. That word abound is important because it doesn't mean that it just comes to you but is, is, is coming to you in its highest estate, its highest functionality. It's multiplying. It's going further and further. So you're seeing that grace come towards you, but you're receiving the heights and the mountaintops of that same grace. So when we deal with the grace of health abounding towards you, when it means that even though you are healthy, God even gives you more health. So your energy get multiplied. Your stamina increases. Your, your physicality is in the glory of God. So you don't even feel feeble or lightheaded. You see what I'm saying? Because all of that grace for health is flowing towards you. So when we deal with the God of our grace, what's going to happen when money cometh is flowing with the God of our grace. That means that the God of all grace is going to take your money situation into the heights and the money top, the mountain tops. Well, uh, money tops. If you have all grace abounding towards you for wealth, that means that wealth is, is going to be seen in your money situation and money is just going to keep on running over to higher measures higher levels and higher demonstrations. The Lord is a demonstrator of financial power, financial power, wealth power, wealth glory. He demonstrates it and he does it like no other. Satan has been copying and attempting to imitate the distribution system of the father. 
The father is the originator of distribution. The father is the originator of harvest. The originator of multiplication. The originator of increase. Verse 7 says, every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. As he purposes in his heart. See, there's a purpose for your sowing. Your giving has a purpose. And see, when the purposes become anointed by love and faith, when it becomes anointed by hope, now your, your, your giving can be glorified. Glorified giving is rooted in perfect love and that casts out fear and that takes away demonic interference in your act to worship the Lord truly. Look what it says there, every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. This is not manipulation, this revelation. So when we deal with this, this saying that the man is given because he got a revelation that the Lord loves the seed, the seed loves the Lord, and we love us and friends. <laughs> and there's a, there's a purpose for the harvest that God wants to get to me because the more I increase, the more I'm going to be empowered for good works. Now look what it says. For God loveth the cheerful giver. The reason why you operate in cheerfulness because cheerfulness is an anointing that revelation produces. Cheerfulness is a grace that God gives to you to know his enjoyment for a thing. And cheerfulness is the realization of the results that shall come to you as a result of doing something that God loves. So the cheerfulness is revelatory power. Cheerfulness is revelatory power. And revelatory, um, revelatory grace moving in your soul. Your soul can only be cheerful when it understands God. His way, his desire, his pleasure. Cheerfulness is the receptivity of divine pleasure. If you're taking notes, write that down. Cheerfulness is the receptivity to do something that God enjoys. Cheerfulness is understanding the way that God wants something to be done. And cheerfulness is submission to right, righteousness. Cheerfulness is submission to righteousness. So when you're sowing cheerfully, giving cheerfully, that means that you're submitted to the righteousness of God. You're not doing it grudgingly. You can only do things grudgingly when you're angry and you don't got an understanding. Then you get bitter, bitter sowing. Bitter meaning, oh, oh, I sow, what, what's going to happen? That's... That's sowing that's not out of cheerfulness because they don't have no revelation. Grudgingly, you have grudges when your soul is wounded. So this type of giving is still corrupt because Satan will tell you that God is taken away from you. And how dumb is that? <laughs> Number one, it belonged to God. And, and God's still going to reward you for giving him what already belongs to him. So what better deal is that? <laughs> Think about that. The Lord has already given to me, even though it already belongs to him, like I did something. So if I'm multiplying off of what don't it belong to him and he telling me it belonged to me now, it really belonged to him. So 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 grudgingly is a lack of revelation is a lack of divine respect. Because when you don't respect God, you, you step into grudges. It's a lack of maturity and it's from a wounded soul. Grudgingly is of a wounded soul. Of necessity, God ain't dealing with need. The seed will embarrass your need and it'll make your need bleed. 
because it'll injure all your needs and inflict pain to all your needs and bring you into the lifestyle of wants. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So last but not least here, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Because that cheerfulness means that you love the Lord just like Solomon loved the Lord offered a thousand burnt offerings. Look what it says here. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have an all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance to every good work. Look what he's telling you how the abundance that God is going to give you is for you to do more good in the earth. I've experienced this and I know what this means. The more money you have, the more good you can do. The more money you have, the more you can bless those that you care about. Now, you ain't got to be anxious for money. And some of you are, you're in a place right now where the Spirit of the Lord is processing you. He's training you. He's getting you ready for the bigger, bigger. But while things is as it is, learn what you need to learn so that when you get that wealth, you don't drop the ball and turn wicked. Because then, then you, you, you're you not going to just drop the ball. You're going to drop dead. See, Hezekiah was wealthy. When he became wicked, the Lord said, you only got a couple of, you about to die. Because I ain't playing with you. I put this wealth anointed on you. You won't act stupid. Uh, all right, I'm going to cut you off. And same thing with Ananias and Sapphira. They had that money cometh operation there. Then they started acting stupid. Money is not for you to do what you want with it. Money has a purpose and an assignment. And the more money you get, the more disciplined you must become. If other young men had the type of money that I've seen, they would do a lot of stuff. I've never been in a strip club. I never took drugs. I don't, I don't drink. I don't go clubbing. I don't do none of that stuff. And I don't be taking no vain trips. My, 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 my home is a vacation spot where I live. I, if you can't make your home a vacation spot, you're not qualified. If you got to, to, to take a trip for you to experience paradise, you, you lack wisdom. Some of you are, you don't understand that even when you live is a test. Why haven't you made the place that you live your paradise? You tell someone when the Lord give me more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your wisdom better come forth where you are now and start enjoying where you are. Stop looking for God to take you somewhere else and you haven't even showed him that you're stable enough in your mind to handle where you are. If you can't enjoy King Jesus in the pit, stop acting like you're going to enjoy him in the palace. If you can't enjoy him in the fire, don't think that you're going to enjoy him with fashion, with fleekiness. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have an all sufficiency in all things. Now, all things is dealing with finances, is dealing with everything. You understand? So when we deal with this, this is everything. Finances, all of that. It's dealing with every aspect. It's saying that you have all sufficiency in all things, even in your health. Even in your mind, even in your body, your joy, your peace, your finances, wealth is in all of this. You understand this? So the spirit want to take you into all these different realms. But the only way you can get here is through sowing. You can't pray your way into this. This text is about the seed. The only way uh, you can get into this is through seed sowing. So you don't get into this because you prayed great, you fasted great. The God of all grace is only in the seed. It's the sowing anointing that gets you here. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody. Lord, every blessing that you give to me, let it come upon the sowers, the prophetic and apostolic partakers. I release the blessing on you. I command this week to be blessed. I command you to multiply. I command you to prosper. I command your way to be made prosperous. I command prosperity angels. Go forth and minister. Minister finances. Do your work the same way you work for me. Work for them. Soars in this ministry. Prosper. 
abound, increase, overflow, go higher, lift it up, glorify, set free, bless. The countenance of God shines on you. You go from glory to glory, power to power, wealth to wealth, blessing to blessing. And I speak over you that you will have no lack. That great grace will rest on you. I decree great grace upon you. No lack in your life. No lack. No lack. No lack. I command lack to go in the name of the Lord. I speak the blessing over you. And I speak over your seeds, your offering, your tithes. I decree. Multiply. 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 I speak over you. Increase, increase, increase. Every seed that you sow this week, I speak over it that it doubles up and returns back to you in multiplied fashion, multiplied money, multiplied favor, multiplied health, multiplied joy. I lose wealth in your life in the name of the Lord. I speak that over your life. 